Hi, my name is Sarah St. Peter, and I'm a Campus Compact AmeriCorps member serving with College of DuPage in Glen Ellen, Illinois. My project is expanding the capacity of a campus-wide initiative to build food security in the community. According to the USDA, food insecurity is defined as the lack of consistent access to enough food for an active, healthy life. The mission of COD is to be a center of excellence in teaching, learning, and cultural experiences by providing accessible, affordable, and comprehensive education. According to Swipe Out Hunger, a national nonprofit, the ability for a student to focus in class, stay in school, and feel part of the campus community is threatened by food insecurity. DOD recognized that in order to pursue its mission to provide accessible higher education, basic needs and food supports for the campus community were necessary. This effort goes hand in hand with the anti-poverty mission of AmeriCorps and Campus Compact, as for many, higher education is considered a pathway out of poverty. I'd like to provide a little bit of background to the project. In 2015, the COD chapter of Phi Theta Kappa chose to investigate food insecurity as part of their campus-wide project. The results of this survey can be seen on the slide. PTK saw these results as sufficient evidence of food insecurity in the campus community and presented a proposal for a food pantry to the cabinet. This on-campus food pantry was established in late 2016. The picture to the right is of the grand opening of the pantry. It was named the Fuel Pantry because its mission is to provide brain fuel for any student, staff, or faculty member with a self-identified need. The pantry was located in a small closet-like space near the campus bookstore. It was open a few days a week with various hours and was based on a points per week system. Another important component to this project is the Fuel Garden. It was started in 2001 on campus as a service learning site. However, it has since been renamed the Fuel Garden and works closely with the Fuel Pantry in providing a source of nutritious, fresh produce to clients. Food security is not about just having enough food, but having nutritious food as well. These photos show some of the harvest and what we have provided to clients, as well as the hydroponic towers that allow us to provide produce throughout the winter seasons. In 2018, the Food Security Initiative was established. The FSI is a campus-wide interdisciplinary group of students, faculty, and staff that are dedicated to fighting food insecurity on campus. The COVID-19 pandemic presented many challenges to the FSI. The campus and pantry shut down for a few months in the early days of the pandemic. However, in late June, the fuel pantry was operating again, but via curbside distribution. I started service in August of 2020. Eventually, the pantry operation moved to the student lounge to accommodate the larger demand for grocery support and the need to be socially distanced while packing orders. The photo on the left shows the food from the pantry set up on the pool tables in the student lounge. The capacity building goal of my project was to partner with the FSI team to expand the operations of the pantry and garden. I'm going to talk a little bit more about what this expansion meant. So the capacity building effort of this service here can be broken down into four parts, marketing and outreach, data strengthening, partnerships and grants and resource development. But first I will start with marketing and outreach. So one important component to marketing and outreach was informing the community that the pantry had switched to a curbside distribution model. I designed flyers with links to our online order form so people could place orders as barrier free as possible. This marketing effort really got off the ground when um, faculty posted these flyers on their Blackboard sites. We found out later that 58% of our registered clients first heard about the pantry from a faculty or staff member. This graph shows the number of visits to the pantry since curbside opened in June of 2020. It has consistently increased due to word of mouth. However, the two highest spikes correspond to when the faculty posted flyers on their Blackboard platforms. I also worked on the creation of our first ever newsletter for the FSI that provided an intro to the initiative, um, data um, from the pantry and garden, as well as a thank you page to our donors and supporters. And it went out to all staff and faculty this spring. 
These are two other marketing examples. They are poster board signs from our food drives that we have in partnership with the Glen Ellen Park District. They were put on Main Street in Glen Ellen leading up to the events. And the middle picture is from the drive we held in December where over 3,000 pounds of food were donated. Another area I assisted in building capacity was through grants and proposals for cash resources. I had the ability to assist in writing the grant for our second Resource for Excellent Award provided by the College of DuPage Foundation. We were awarded $20,000 in support of the expansion of the fuel pantry program. We are also prompted by the Wheaton Rotary Club to submit a proposal for $10,000 to allow for adding refrigeration and freezer capacity to our pantry along with the implementation for fuel snack stations across campus. I also helped with the recruitment of new FSI interns to work on the pantry and garden. Additionally, through service learner management and assisting with the seasonal food drives, I was able to help leverage over $7,640 worth of in-kind donations to the fuel pantry. This was about 4,391 pounds of food. I also created a service learning guide as an educational background to the pantry for students, as well as lots of research on nutrition education. I also built capacity through strengthening our data collection process. I researched best practices for data collection for food pantries and worked on implementing these techniques. All of these measures help strengthen the data we are collecting, our ability to collect it, as well as the sustainability of the program. Additionally, this information can be used in the future when applying for grants and funding. I assisted in drafting out a proposal for fundraising design that um, would not only hopefully raise money for the project, but also raise awareness for the project. It has not been implemented yet, but may be able to by this holiday season. I also spent a lot of time researching and investigating next steps for snack stations across campus as well as potential future partnerships and ideas for the growth of the initiative. So the anti-poverty inter interventions for, for the project were to, to provide food and nutrition support to the community. We also provided a lot of information on community resources that may be of help to our clients. Um, so the picture to the right is of a guide that I created that we email out to all new clients. So here are some of our numbers from the start of curbside through April of 2021. We have served 280 non-duplicated clients, have had 858 visits to the pantry, have helped support over 820 additional family members of clients through these food supports, and have, and have provided over 25,000 pounds of food to our clients. We are currently in the early stages of investigating project outcomes. However, some of the early information we are receiving from a survey is promising. We found that out of clients that said they had previously worried about running out of food before being able to purchase more, 50% said that this was no longer a concern for them after using the pantry. Additionally, of those struggling with food insecurity, 70% indicated that the pantry had specifically helped alleviate one or more of the challenges that they faced. So while these are, this is in the early stages, um, the results from this survey are showing an increased rate of food security for clients. Now, one of the best evidence of outcomes we have currently is our client testimonials. And for the sake of time, I'll read just one. The fuel pantry was there for me when my own parents couldn't be. Being an international student, the pandemic hit me really hard. Banks were shut down overseas, so I couldn't get help from my parents financially. The fuel pantry has helped me so much. I never again went to bed hungry, and they always asked me if I needed anything more without judgment. They worked so hard to help me and my family with meals. We are always thankful for any client feedback that we receive because it helps us to improve the program. Now I'd like to move on towards sustaining the project. Our program relies on the fact that we're able to recruit and train student interns. So that's one major part of sustainability for the project. We have also started the discussion with the college in the potential for hiring a pantry manager. It would be extremely helpful to have someone solely dedicated to the management of the pantry. Um, we were also officially approved for a third year AmeriCorps member. We will have a sustainability binder for them with notes and how to's to get them introduced to the project as well as um, 
guidelines and information for everything that I've worked on during the service year. Finally, just as a few closing thoughts, I'd like to address some challenges um, throughout the service year as well as some recommendations. One challenge was that it was very difficult being introduced to a new project and workplace almost entirely virtually. There's a steep learning curve, but luckily my supervisor as well as others at my host site were welcoming and communicative. It was also a challenge writing grants and planning future partnerships when the repercussions of COVID-19 were and still are unknown. It also posed unique challenges regarding social distancing while packing for large amounts of people and hiring freezes on student workers. Now, some recommendations that I have for our third year AmeriCorps member and for the project in general are to continue to improve data collection through surveys and determining low income status of clients. I would also recommend pursuing local and national partnerships such as one with Swipe Out Hunger. It opens the opportunity to learn from a national group of college campuses working towards a hunger-free campus as well, and the potential implementation of a year-round year fundraising program. I would also encourage involving student leadership and government at COD to support students in advocating for their own campus community. Lastly, I want to thank all the amazing people I've worked with over the course of this year, because the accomplishments of my service year were entirely a collaborative effort. My supervisor, Shannon Hernandez, is the coordinator of student life at COD, and I'd also specifically like to thank Anna Vitek, the fuel garden manager, as well as everyone at the Food Security Initiative, the Campus Compact team, and my fellow AmeriCorps members that were very supportive and had great suggestions. So thank you so much for listening to my presentation.